So in this video, I'd like to talk for a few minutes about sort of the history of where this CRISPR system, this CRISPR technology came from. So it's always tempting to ask the question, who discovered CRISPR? And if we were to answer that question, the easy answer would be not just one person. Uh, CRISPR, our understanding of CRISPR evolved over about a 30 year period with major contributions from lots and lots of different groups. And that's the fascinating part of this story, is how science often builds on technology. Um, <clears throat> so new discoveries are often made because a new technology has been developed <clears throat> a few years before that have allowed us to look more deeply into an area of science that we could really examine very carefully before. And that's certainly the case with CRISPR. Uh, the two technologies I'd point to is number one, cloning, the use of restriction enzymes in the 1970s. Uh, people found themselves with the ability to cut DNA at specific sequences and then to begin swapping pieces of DNA around, constructing new recombinant DNA molecules. And that led to sort of a revolution in the, bio, in the molecular biosciences. And then at a, uh, shortly after that, at about the same time, a little bit later, we developed the ability to sequence DNA. And that actually plays a, a very critical role in the discovery and, and the understanding of CRISPR. And I, I'll hope to explain that to you in just a second. So, uh, the story, the process of science, how science builds on itself, uh, you're gonna see that several times uh, as you prepare for this event. Uh, so, rather than ask who discovered CRISPR, we should ask how was CRISPR discovered? And the answer to that would be <clears throat> in 1987, the very first published hint as to, what, as to what CRISPR was, what it would become, happened in a Japanese lab. <clears throat> These people, one of, one of the people in this lab was Yoshizuma Ishino. And they were they cloning they were cloned a gene from E. coli. Uh, not exactly sure what gene it was. It was called IAP, whatever that means. So this was in 1987. You could get a, a very credible paper for simply reporting the cloning of a gene and its sequence. So that's what they did, and they learned something about that gene, how it was regulated, and and so forth. But then they also noticed that there was some sequence downstream from the end of the gene, something like 180 nucleotides. They had this sequence, and as they were looking at it, they noticed something unusual about, about that sequence. And next-gen science standards tell us right now that, that patterns, the recognition of patterns is one of these cross-cutting concepts in science. So these Japanese researchers not only noticed this pattern, <clears throat> but then they actually reported it at the very end of their paper. Uh, there was a, I'll give you a hint, they, they call them short palindromic repeats. CRISPR, as we've come to know this technology, is clustered, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats. So the Japanese group in 1987 noticed some short palindromic repeats that were clustered together and separated from each other, interspersed with some other sequence of regular size. So I love the CRISPR acronym. It's very hard to sort of learn it, but once you've learned it and understood how CRISPR works, as you say, clustered, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats, that tells the whole story right there. All right, so the Japanese group <clears throat> reported this sequence, and I know you can't see this, but we may make this file available to you somewhere on the website. If you want to look at this sequence that they reported downstream from the gene they were really interested in studying, and you might see if you can see the pattern in this sequence. And if you can, then rest assured you would have been smart enough to have discovered CRISPR back in 1987. Now, what happened after that? I can't begin to explain that to you now, but we have put on the website a very good
good video from the Singapore NIE NEI. It's a great whiteboard animation of the history of CRISPR. So I would, uh, the history of discovery of CRISPR. So I'd really encourage you to, uh, to watch that video. You won't understand all of it, certainly not the first time through, but as you begin to dig into this story, uh, some of those elements will become very familiar and understandable for you. Um, what else do I need to say about where it came from? I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to do this because again, it's a long, long, long topic. It's fascinating, but uh, you guys probably aren't interested as much as I am in the history of science. Uh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll end by, by reading one thing. So here's a paper titled The Heroes of CRISPR. This was written by Eric Lander, who's the director of the Broad Institute at MIT. One of the two major CRISPR research groups in the U.S. Uh, is at MIT. That's led by Feng Zhang. The other one is Jennifer Doudna at Berkeley. Uh, so Eric is at MIT. So rather than, oh, I have to be careful what I'm going to say here, because this was a very controversial paper. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to say anything about the Zong lab or the Doudna lab. Uh, leave that up to you to determine whether or not Eric fairly represented those two groups. But I just want to read the very last paragraph of this paper because this is this is really the key. It says here, finally, the narrative underscores the scientific that scientific breakthroughs are rarely eureka moments. You'll hear that in the NEI video. They talk about a eureka moment, which is a eureka moment to us in the US. Um, they are typically ensemble acts, so they're not eureka moments. They are typically ensemble acts played out over a decade or more, 30 years in this case, in which the cast becomes part of something greater than what any one of them could be alone. It's a wonderful lesson for the general public, as well as for a young person like you contemplating a life in science. So as you read about CRISPR and base editing, uh, just be aware to some degree as to where this science came from and how it all builds on work that came before.